scary stories. Before we get into today's stories, if you're new, go ahead and hit the like button and subscribe to my channel as it really helps me out. And if you are already subscribed, welcome back and thank you for subscribing. Okay, now with that out of the way, let's get into today's video. I just came out of a relationship and felt like a bit of casual dating will be fun. So I went on to Tinder. I made it clear to the few people I actually matched with and spoke to that I didn't want anything serious, just a dinner date or a pub night here and there. I matched with a really cute guy. Let's call him Pete. He had just moved to my city and also wasn't looking for anything serious. He just wanted to meet some people and see some local spots. The first night we met up at a well-known tapa bar. I chose this place because I had a few friends that were waitresses and a bar staff there. So I felt safe meeting a stranger here. He was on time. We had a nice chat. Really cool guy on first impression. We spoke about work to which he responded that he's a software developer, but he's just started his freelancing career. We spoke about where he stays now, that he's moved up from here, and he said that he's sharing a place with some friends. Rent is quite pricey in this city, so it made sense to me. He asked where I live, and I told him that I'm lucky to have my own one-bedroom apartment and quite a nice and popular part of town. Mostly thanks to my parents that helped me save and gave me a portion of the deposit money for my 21st birthday, which I invested and grew until I had enough to put down a decent deposit. He then offered to drop me off at home, but I said no, I'd prefer to Uber home by myself. He asked if this was because I'm going to meet someone else after him, and I laughed because I genuinely thought this was a joke. The next time I saw Pete was about three days later. He said he knew it was fast, but he actually couldn't stop thinking about me, and he wanted to see me again. This time, we met at a different restaurant. Also, one I chose because I went to school with the owner and knew all of the staff pretty well. This place is a little bit more pricey, and he got super annoyed with me for ordering as much as I did. I couldn't understand why, since I insisted on paying for my own stuff both times we met. That night, same story. Let me drop you off at home, please. Again, I said no. While we are in the middle of this conversation, he gets a call. He stopped away, but I could still hear a fair amount. No, I think I'm going to stay with you again. Yeah, I'm with her. Don't worry about it. Okay, I'll be home soon. So now, I think he's chatting to his roommate or maybe his mom. But I don't ask. He comes back to our table. Please, I insist. Bad things happen to women that Uber home this late by themselves. I'd feel better if I dropped you off. Not having the energy to argue, I tell him fine and I put my address into his GPS. As soon as he got home, he messages me and tells me he'll be picking me up in the morning to go for a picnic. I reply that I actually have cleaning to do, but again, he insists that he'll see me at 10. Come 10 a.m. the next morning, best believe he's right outside of my apartment. I get into his car, and as he leans over to kiss my cheek, I notice that his breath stinks. Obviously, I'm a little grossed out. We have our picnic, and it's quite nice. He tried to kiss me a few times, but I have avoided it with everything in me. By about 4 p.m., I tell him that I really want to go home, and that the park we went to is about an hour and a half drive from my apartment, so I couldn't really Uber back home because it would cost a fortune. He agrees it's time to go, so we get in his car and we're off. I fall asleep in the car on the drive back, and when I wake up, 
he asked if we should finish the rest of the bubble we got for Mimosas up at my apartment. I said to him that I don't want to, and he just snaps. He raised his voice and said something along the lines of, What are you hiding from me? Just be honest. Why are you so desperate to keep me out of your fucking apartment? I was so confused I actually just kept quiet. He dropped me off, but I could see his car across from my apartment for about half an hour before he actually left. About five minutes later, he left. He let me know that he's home safe, and he thinks he's starting to fall for me, so naturally I'm freaked out because I made it clear that I didn't want anything serious. He said he felt the same. I said to him, if that's the case, I think we should take a break from hanging out with each other. About five days later, he messages me and asks if we can go out for dinner again. He found an Indian cuisine place he knows I'll love. I tell him it's cool. He should just send me the address. He tells me that he'll pick me up. So 7 p.m. comes. He tells me he's downstairs. And as I go down to meet him, I see he's standing at my gate. I press the remote control to open the gate, and he walked inside to meet me. Show me which one's yours. I'd love to see how you live. Not hi, or how are you? That's his opening line, so now I'm naturally unsettled. I say to him that I'm starving. Could we go for dinner, and I'll show you my place at a later stage. At dinner, he gets a call again. This time, he didn't step away. Yeah, I don't know. I can let you know in about 10. He then turns to me. Am I sleeping by you tonight? Um, no, I don't know. I have to work tomorrow. Yes, me too. Then back to the caller. I'll let you know, okay? No, you're not. Can you just give me your things, please? And do what with them? Take them to that girl you're seeing. I'm done asking you. Now, I'm sitting here in absolute shock and terror. What in the fuck is going on here? Our food arrives, and we barely speak. I say to him, Why did you ask me if you can sleep over by me? We're not spending time together like that. You know this. He then spins the story about how he just wants to hang out and again, see how I live. I then say to him, very frankly, that I don't like having strangers in my apartment. He gets very touched and the bill arrives. As per usual, I pay for myself. He pays for himself. I say to him, I'll get an Uber home. And he says, what's the use? I already know where you live. Let me drop you off. By now, I'm already decided that this will be the last time I see him. I get into his car and I reach for my jumper that I threw in the back when he fetched me. I notice a bag in the back of the car full of clothes and toiletries as well as a pillow. I don't think much of it. I don't personally drive or own a car, but I know my sister always has the most random shit on the back seat of her car. On the way home, he's dead silent when suddenly he says, Do you know how selfish you are? I've had no issue driving you around, but you don't want me to sleep over by you? I say to him that I've never had an issue with Ubering, and if he's so touched, I also have no issue with paying him what the Ubers would have cost me. I'm over this, and I'm not even playing nice anymore. His phone rings again. Your stuff is in the security boom at the gate, Pete. Stay with your girlfriend or stay with your mom. You're fucked for taking advantage of everyone like this. I don't speak to my mom. You know this, you bitch. And then hangs up. I then think this is maybe an ex-girlfriend that he needs to collect things from before I've even had a chance to process what has just happened. He turns to me and starts yelling at me. I have nowhere to go. Are you fucking happy, you spoiled bitch? 
living off mommy and daddy's money, getting driven around by me like I fucking work for you, bitch. My whole body got stiff with fear. I don't know if I'm going to cry or throw up. In my head, I'm just planning on how I'm going to grab my bag the second he stops and run straight for the cafe under my apartment. If you run through the cafe, you can get to the gate that takes you to the back part of my apartment, and it works with fingerprint access. There wasn't time to still find my keys in my bag, and I didn't want the main gate I normally use to open wide enough for him to get in when I go in. He stops at my apartment, and as planned, I jump out, run into the cafe, run out the back, through the little gate, up to the second floor. My apartment was on the fourth floor, and I hammered on a neighbor's door. I went inside and told her and her husband everything that happened and asked if they would mind calling the cafe to explain why I ran through with no explanation and in such a state. I blocked Pete and I haven't seen him since. I'm still not sure what his case was from what I gathered. He was basically homeless and I think he wanted to get into my apartment to maybe sleep over there for a while. I'm not sure if the girl that kept calling him was also a Tinder date that let her into his apartment and he just never left. All I know is that he scared the living daylights out of me and I never ever want to see him again. So to start, I'm a transgender woman, I'm single, and I make my status as trans very clear on all of my dating profiles, except Plenty of Fish, because they consider that to be talking about sex, and they will straight up ban you. So I state instead that I'm a huge proponent of trans rights. So this guy messages me, he lives about an hour away, kinda cute in a mildly creepy way, like something seems a little off about him, but people can't help how they look. So I give him a chance, just like I would want. I discover that he's a smoker, but he says he's trying hard to quit, and only does it when he's really stressed out or upset. We have a nice conversation, and he finally asks for my number, and without thinking about it, I give him the number, but tell him I'm getting ready for my evening classes, so I'll be slow to respond. A few minutes go by and I get, Hi, it's username from Plenty of Fish. Now, usually I send standard quick messages. Hi, it's Allie. So just to be clear, since my profile might be a little vague, I'm a transgender woman. I know that's not everyone's cup of tea, so if you are not interested, I completely understand. About 20% of the time, the guy isn't interested and gets rude and needs to be blocked. And the other 80% is split between immediate inappropriate questions and dick pics, casual acceptance, or dead silence. But, like I said, I was getting ready to go to class, so I hadn't sent the message yet. A few minutes go by, and I'm about to text him my standard when I get another text. Who the fuck is full dead name? Why is he paying your goddamn cell phone bill? Me. Where did you get that name? Him. Answer the goddamn question. Who is he? I am honestly stunned at this point, and I realize he must have paid off one of those shady websites that offer personal info for a fee. Well, if you must know, I'm a transgender, and that used to be my goddamn name. I was about to tell you when you pulled that stunt. Please just do us both a favor and lose my number. That's incredibly invasive, and I don't want to talk to you anymore. You still live at the same address? I'm gonna come and see you so we can talk about this in person. No, I moved a few months ago. And I'm getting ready to head out, like I said, 
You need to leave me alone. Don't contact me again. Since you have something to hide, I'm going to run a full background check on you. You lied to me, and I don't fucking accept that. I'm sending screenshots of this conversation and your Plenty of Fish profile and your photos to my two best friends who work in law enforcement in your hometown and my ex-boyfriend who I'm still on good terms with who works for the local sheriff's office. Don't text me again. I didn't hear anything from him for about a few weeks. I made sure my doors and windows were locked and the aforementioned friends and ex-friend would check up on me from time to time. Eventually, it just became one of those weird things that makes you laugh uneasily. And then one day, I thought I saw him at the local grocery store. Same dark hair, thick glasses, frames, and just creepy guy staring at me, watching me as I shopped. I texted my ex about it, and as an upswing on things, my ex and I got back together in a casual sort of way, and he stayed the night a few times a month, off and on. One night, when I was alone though, I just kept getting this weird feeling and smelling smoke. I lived in a little apartment complex that was three separate apartments that shared walls. No plumbing or air ducts. I don't smoke and I'm very sensitive to the smell thanks to my asthma. The apartment had a wall unit AC so I turned it off since it had apparently been pulling air in from the neighbor's guest who must have been chain smoking I thought. I had an ASL video due the next morning so I was up all night practicing and recording the video singing the same story over and over again until it was almost a dance rather than narration. A couple of times I had to restart the video because my cat was going nuts. Finally around 7 a.m. I had the video finished and sent it in and was ready for bed. So I double checked all the doors and windows were locked, set an alarm and went to sleep. I woke up and got ready for school was running a bit late and had to hurry out the door, but I noticed something weird but didn't have time to stop and register it. Classes went smoothly. I got an A. As I got home, I saw what had been bugging me. Each apartment had a small garden on each side of the porch. Mine was nothing but gravel and pavers. The previous tenant had put in, but it was tidy, except for a pile of cigarette butts that looked like someone had dumped the car ashtray in my garden. There was no other trash, just that pile right in front of my bedroom window. I don't think anything about it at first and just get a broom and dustpan and sweep it up. As I'm doing it, my neighbor, an old man, comes out and asks if my boyfriend ever got a hold of me. I ask him what he means. He tells me, there was a young man waiting for me on my front porch off and on a few hours last night that he had seen the guy around before thought he was my boyfriend. I asked what he looked like. Dark hair, thick glasses, chain smoking. I text the on again off again ex. Cops take statements and I give them screenshots. I move out of state a few weeks later for unrelated reasons and I've legally changed my name since with closed records. I don't give guys my number anymore. Ladies and my fellow queer family, use a texting app until you get to know someone because for like $5, a creep can get everything from your number. I am 18 years old. After a particularly bad breakup, I decided that I might as well try my hand at plenty of fish. My mom met her boyfriend from there and he seemed nice enough and I figured why not. So I set up a profile 
and within a few days I had just a few messages from people but nothing was really working out. Then this one guy messaged me. His name was Josh. Josh was really attentive and really sweet and he asked me really engaging questions about a few things on my profile like why I liked singing so much and what I thought about some issues going on in the news recently. It was refreshing amidst the many questions of if I've ever known a real man or if I was into this particular thing or wanted to hook up. After talking to him for a few weeks, I decided that maybe it would be nice if we met in person, so we arranged to meet at a store near my house. I used to work there, so it's really no big deal to me, and I don't have a car, so I just walked. He looked like his profile, and nothing seemed really weird. He was very sweet, and opened the car door for me, and we went down to the creek. Now I live in the South United States, in a small town. So basically the only thing to do down here is to go swimming, drive around, or go to a slightly bigger town and mess around over there. I just thought of sitting down at a creek would be nice. After all, it was something that we did both enjoy. Sadly, the creek near my house was very shallow due to a rainstorm that came through and brushed a lot of the sand from the bank into the water. So we decided to go to a different creek that he said was deeper about 15 minutes away from my house. No big deal. Josh told me a friend of his named Nick was supposed to be there with his girlfriend. But when we got there, there was no other cars. I was apprehensive, so I guess he saw it on my face and called his friend. Nick said they would be coming shortly and there was nothing to worry about, but they were okay and it was fine. Nick never showed up. The date was all right. Mostly we talked basic things like what we enjoyed about each other's personality and what we turn into if we go too far. I got a red flag as we were getting out of the water. He asked me over and over and over again if this date I was going to be his girlfriend this was only our first date, and I'm not that type of person. I don't really trust people, so me being alone with this guy was a big stretch in and of itself. I told him after the date is over, I'll give you an answer, but he kept pushing me. I didn't say anything after that. I just ignored him. We put on our clothes and got back in the car. He handed me a shirt to throw on since mine was a little thin. We decided to go to the park. On the way, he just kept asking me over and over and over again to be his girlfriend, that he really liked me and really wanted it to work out. I told him that after the date, I was going to give him an answer. I usually text my mother where I was whenever I went off with anyone. I always do. I texted my mom and told her that I felt kind of weird about Josh but she said it was probably just jitters. I trust in my mom, so I brushed it off and went to the park anyway. When we were there, he just kept asking, Will you be my girlfriend? Over and over again. Eventually, I just got sick and fucking tired of him asking me, so I said fine. I didn't really want to. I felt weird, but I still said yes. I definitely should have not done that. That was probably the biggest mistake I had ever made. After that, we went to go see Jurassic World, which was playing in another town about 10 minutes away from there. After talking to my mom, making sure it was okay that I stay a little later than planned, we headed that way. The movie was nice, but Josh wasn't. At the movies, he started really touchy feeling like constantly trying to hold my hand or play with my hair or get me to sit in his lap. Normally I like these things because it's a sign of affection, but with him it was just really weird. I wasn't feeling it. I asked him to stop and even swatted his hand away a couple of times. We were driving back home. 
I got a text from my ex. It wasn't anything bad, just an asking where I have been and if I was okay. We were still okay, I guess. We weren't friends, but we weren't enemies either. He would pop in to check on me from time to time and I would do the same for him, no big deal. But when Josh saw the text, he went off. I told him it was my ex and that we were still cool, but there was nothing to worry about. It turned into something I definitely needed to worry about. It was then that Josh proceeded to tell me that his brother is a higher up of a gang in the state I live in. That weirded me out, but people lie about that shit all of the time. Though I don't really take it seriously, and that's when he started threatening me. He took my phone away from me in the car, mind you, and while driving proceeded to go to my Facebook, change my profile picture, and put it in a relationship. I asked him what he was doing, but he wouldn't let me see my phone. I was pissed, but something told me not to go off. So I didn't. Instead, I waited until he was done and texted my ex to just leave me alone and he said okay. That was it. I was done talking to him and it was just me and Josh in the car. Josh proceeded to threaten to slit my ex and his little sister's throat in front of me if I ever spoke to him again. What really got me is, is that I never told him that my ex had a little sister and he named her by name. I was really freaked out but couldn't really do anything. I was still stuck in the car with this guy. I really wanted to leave but I didn't have a way out so I just waited until he took me home and he ended up talking to my parents and staying until almost 4 a.m. I wanted to go to sleep but whenever I tried he would try to make me lay on him. I didn't want to, but if I moved, he would pick my head up and just move me right back. So I just stopped, pretended to be asleep, and wait until he left and gave me a kiss on the forehead. The next day was my brother's birthday and my mom had invited him over, so I waited until he came to the house before the party started. I called him to remind him the party was happening and he was talking about how a few friends of his had gotten word of who my ex and where he lived. He started cussing under his breath in Russian. I don't speak Russian, but I know cussing when I hear it. When he got to the house, he told me that he knew people who could handle him, me and my ex. I told him it wasn't necessary and to cut it out. I told him the one thing he was never supposed to do is threaten me and then I didn't feel safe and he needed to leave. He begged me to stay, begged to give him a second chance, but I wasn't giving up. Something about it just rubbed me the wrong way. Normally, I do give people a second chance, but not this time. He pulled out his wallet to grab something from inside. I believe it was his lighter and I saw his ID. His profile said he was 22, but the birthday year was off. If he was only 22, then he should have been born in the year 1995. But that is not what was on his ID. The last name he told me, Andrews, was also wrong. It was not the one on his ID. Needless to say, I was done. Very done. I told him to take the shirt he had given me when we had went swimming and to leave. He got pissed off. He threw the shirt away and swore up and down that he would change, that it would never happen again. I didn't believe him, not from the look in his eyes. I know that look and it's not what I was going to trust. He then tried to follow me inside and smacked me on my ass as I was going inside. But because I was in the middle of cooking when he showed up, I had a hot spatula waiting on the stove for him. I told my mom that if he ever showed up again to shoot him, my family doesn't play like that. I told him my parents were on their way home and that he needed to leave. He asked if he needed to go and I said yes. He said goodbye and got in his car and left. 
that part is fairly normal, I guess. But what really freaked me out is that I found out after he left, I googled the name that I saw on his ID and what I found was beyond disturbing. Apparently he had kept a woman who he was in a relationship prisoner for basically three months while he beat the crap out of her. She refused to get a tattoo of his name so he instead carved his initials on her back. What I read in the police report honestly made me start crying. He was a horrible person. I'm still scared because I don't know if he has people out there looking for me or my ex or his sister. But what scares me the most is that I could have been next. So Josh, let's not meet again.